Mike Gundy had a very interesting way of defending one of his players, Caleb. He didn't scream his age out and about, but he did talk about how many times that he had been out drinking and driving. Mike Gundy, the mullet, what did he have to say in de- trying to defend one of his players? This is one of the most bizarre things. So for those who don't know, Ollie Gordon got a DUI. Um, Mike Gundy is not suspending him. Um, he claimed on the ESPN Plus broadcast that um, Gordon blew a 0.1 uh blood alcohol content um which is narrowly above the 0.08 legal limit he says that after looking up that metric he said that could just be two or three beers and then he said i've probably been guilty of that a thousand times so basically mike gundy just said i've been drinking and driving what's the big deal now may i ask you a question sure you probably know as well as i do that if you drink two beers and you're you're a slim guy and I'm in fairly good shape, not when I'm up with my three weight, not when I'm three spins, but I can tell you that from buying the old tester for fun, that yes, you can be over 0.08 after two beers. And I bet you could, and I know I could when I was in shape. So I love to jump on Mike Gundy as much as anybody, but is he speaking the truth? Mike Gundy said the absolute truth. He said the quiet part out loud. I mean, I'm not even going to deny that. He said the quiet part out loud that so many people have done it. Where I have an issue with it, though, is this is the Mike Gundy that said, if you want to go after an athlete, one of my athletes, you go after one who doesn't do the right thing. You don't downgrade him because he does everything right and may not play as well on Saturday. And yes, I remember that 2007 press conference like yesterday. And I I can actually quote it. Well, here is an athlete that didn't do the right thing in Ollie Gordon. Now, even if you want to say that it's widespread, just because something's widespread, just because I don't think somebody should have their career and their future ruined over something, and they shouldn't, just because some some of us may have done some things, doesn't mean we don't think it should be illegal or shouldn't be illegal, okay? Um, I will just keep it quiet, but Dave, I'm sure there's some things you do that just because you didn't did it doesn't mean you don't think it should be illegal. Um, I've sped today? recklessly before today. No, just today in the, oh. in the like Maybe I have reckless. <laughs> I have sped recklessly in the past. I've driven very fast. That doesn't mean I don't think there should be a speed limit. Okay. I shouldn't have done it. I was wrong. And I was, and had I gotten arrested at that time, I would have deserved it. Not arrested, good, but pulled over. Good point by Kazuki. And I don't know what that name name means, but, uh, Ollie Gordon, uh, should also be underage. So his BAC should be under 0.00 and okay well that uh, one i disagree with the law it, you should be allowed to drink at 18 sorry yeah but the law is a law so um yeah, no, it's a law. you gotta follow the law the yeah. law. i mean it's a <laughs> law i mean if you, if you think about it but um first of all i think that a dui should be an automatic suspension i don't care how minor it may view i think that's an automatic one game suspension I've said for a long time that the SEC should take over these suspensions because there's a conflict of interest with players. So to me, a DUI in and of itself is a one-game suspension. A DUI involving any sort of traffic accident is a three-game suspension. Um, If you lay your hands on a woman um, and it can be proven, we all know what may or may not have happened in the A.J. Johnson situation, but you're done with college football if, if there's any sort of Ray Rice incident where you know it happened. Um, so I, I, I think the SEC needs to step in at, at some point or the conferences or the NCAA or whatever it is, because I look at Mike Gundy and I can understand him trying to keep people, uh, trying to keep players on the team because he's got assistant coaches that are depending on him and that want to stay there. Caleb, I ask you this, can you think of one coach that as a fan, you would least rather have his career than Mike Gundy, who is now coached at Ohio State for about a quarter of a century. Oklahoma does, State. Oklahoma State. A quarter of a century does not have a championship, a national championship to show for it, has a terrible haircut, and has flirted with every college football team in the history of man. And now you're sitting there thinking he's knocking at the door. 
He's what Philip Fulmer would have been had Philip Fulmer not won it all in 98. Knock at the door, knock at the door, knock at the door. The dad blame door never opens. I mean, Mike Gundy, I don't want his career at all if I'm a fan. But you can't compare Fulmer to Gundy in this situation. It's Oklahoma State. There's a ceiling. There's that, a ceiling. That's fair. That, that's fair. There, there, there is a ceiling. But I just, if somebody told me 25 years ago, you get 25 years of him screaming that he's 40, flirting with other schools and not winning a national title, wouldn't you say, I'm out? I do not want any part of that. I mean, it depends on where I, oh, well, if, if you're an Oklahoma State fan, though, wouldn't you? Like, this is the best you know. You, you may know this is the best you're going to get. Like, look, I've said this with Tennessee basketball. Wouldn't you take 20 years of Tennessee basketball knocking on the door without a national title, given what you saw Tennessee basketball be in the 90s? Okay, same argument. Why can't Oklahoma State be better than they are? They've got that major investor. What's his name? I can't remember. Oh, his he's name. dead now. T Boone Pickens. Well, yeah, but I'm sure he left a lot of money to somebody. But he, why can't Tennessee be better? They got a bunch of. T See, I never thought that was a good excuse that Don DeVoe used back in the 90s that they didn't spend money on basketball. Why wouldn't you spend money on basketball? It's a revenue producing sport. Oh, I get spending money, but there's still certain ceilings that you're going to hit. Um, my issue with Gundy is I just think he's a. I think he's a fraud in a lot of ways. Um, and I don't mean his, his resume. I think he's a, he's a fake. Like he, here's the thing. Mike Gundy's trying to be all real here. I'm just going to be, I'm just being honest with you guys. I'm Mike Gundy. I'm being honest. This happens. He's, he's being honest with you when you want, he's being honest with you when he wants an excuse to keep his player on the field. But in 2007, ask the quarterback that he was defending when he did that media rant. He thinks that the whole thing was staged. Um, for recruiting purposes. That, uh, I like forget it. his name. It felt yeah. like it. Uh, let, let me ask the message board. Did you ever really want Mike Gundy through all of Tennessee's coaching hires? And, and I will tell you that as a guy who covered those hires and made phone calls for 20 hours out of a 24-hour day, he was never a real factor in the Tennessee job. That was him playing up the Tennessee job to get more money from Oklahoma State. So, he was really barely on my radar, Caleb, early in the process. So I'm sure you probably know a little bit more about him. Is that somebody that Tennessee fans really wanted, kind of wanted, or thought that would be a good place to land? In 2018, 17, 18, from moving on from Butch Jones, they really wanted him. The 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 three that I think they were excited about after the Greg Schiano hire was fire was next, and they knew John Gruden wasn't coming, were Mike Gundy, Jeff Brom, and Mike Leach. Um the okay, lot of people want to win three. Brom, Leach, Gundy. Which would you rather have? Oh, me personally? Yes. Jeff Brom. I think Jeff Brom's the best coach of those three. I would um, take Brom. I would take Gundy. And then rest in peace, I would take the late Mike Leach. I probably would too. I probably would too. I think Mike Leach, it's funny. People are like, oh, imagine what he could do with better offense, with better talent. But I'm like, I think because he runs such a ran, uh, he runs a specific system, I think his offense always has a ceiling the same way it always has a floor, doesn't it? Like the ceiling is 10 wins, the floor is six wins, but you're never going to get outside of that window, basically. And so, yeah, I, I would take a Gundy or a Jeff Brom. But yes, no, they wanted him. Gundy's just, again, it fits where he is at Oklahoma State, but there have been a lot of, you know, the reason, the other reason this is a red flag, there have been a lot of issues at Oklahoma State. Remember that whole like, two, like, story of like scandals they had in like 2015 that came out when Danny Mac with Les Miles was there with the level of how they were buying players. I, I just think that um, there's a lot to not like about Mike Gundy. And I think if, 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 if Nick Saban had said this, I probably would be more forgiving. Is that weird? Is that, is that unfair to say Dave? <laughs> like if Nick no, Saban said it, I'd you win 85,000 national championships. You can say a lot of things and sound, a little bit well, different. Also, because uh, I think Nick Saban develops people. I think he does. I know that's. I know that's like. I, I hate to sound altruistic, but I think Nick Saban does to a certain degree like to develop. He he cares about his players' futures to a certain degree. Is that weird to say? Fair? To, like, is he one of the best people you know to have ever been a successful head coach? Just as as a human. <sighs> he's so, I can't say just because he's so guarded. And I don't really know much about him. 
I mean, do you really know? I, I know that he eats two oatmeal pies for breakfast. I know that he like his favorite place to take recruits on a recruiting trip is a lake by his lake house. Do you know anything else about him? I know he goes, he's devoted and goes to mass every single Sunday in Tuscaloosa. You know that. And I know he doesn't make an arse of himself on social media like guys at LSU in South Carolina. I, I'm going to say this. I think uh, I think most coaches, just like athletes, um, I think when you're a, when you're a coach, it, when you're on the road a lot, it's it, it's hard to always be faithful. If you ask me a question, I'm willing to bet Nick Saban has never ever steered from from Terry, not once. I'm putting money I don't, on that. I don't know, nor care. Nor care if he. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, like, like, I will say this though: there are a lot of people out there, and Derek Derek referenced it. There are a lot of people out there that believe that Nick Saban regularly paid players, that boosters regularly paid players. So I don't care. You wouldn't argue with that. No, I don't care if they're doing that at all. Here's what I believe happened. Not any inside info. I'm just telling you what I think happened. It's the same thing that happened at UCLA with John Wooden. I can't remember the guy's name, but John Wooden had a really good assistant coach. He wasn't a really good assistant coach. He was a really good bag man. And that's why they got everybody they wanted for so long. Now, John Wooden didn't know anything about it. So that's what I think probably happened at Alabama. They got the Saban discount, but they still got some money. And Nick Saban didn't know anything about I, it. That's my theory. My theory is Nick Saban took over. Um, Nick Saban went to a prestigious program like Alabama with more credibility than any coach ever had gone to a prestigious program because of his success at LSU. And he recruited well at LSU because you wake up and get top five talent when you're at LSU. Yes. It's that simple. Good Lord, you got a tiger as a mascot. That tells you something right there.